If you've been struggling with dizziness and seeking relief, you've come to the right place. In this video, we will be diving deep into the world of vestibular rehab. My name is Amy McMillan, vestibular physical therapist, and I am thrilled that you are here with me and you want to learn more about my favorite topic, vestibular rehab. And I know, I know, probably one of the most nerdy things to love talking about, but I cannot help what I am interested in. So in this video, we will discuss the four treatment categories of vestibular rehab, how long they take to work, and which conditions or diagnoses are meant to be treated with each category. Vestibular rehab is a specialized form of therapy designed to address issues within your inner ear, known as the vestibular system. Whether you're experiencing vertigo, imbalance, or general dizziness, the principles of vestibular rehab are effective and can make a remarkable difference in reducing dizziness and improving your day-to-day -day function. The first treatment approach is canalith repositioning maneuvers, commonly used with BPPV or benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, or ear crystals or ear rocks if you have heard those terms as well. So a canalith repositioning maneuver, you may have heard of the Epley or the Foster maneuver, which are two examples, but there are so many more. The Samant, Gofoni, Barbecue Roll, and Anterior Deep Head Hang, just to name a few. The caveat with these maneuvers is they are only effective if your vertigo is actually from BPPV. So if you have been diagnosed with BPPV, then Canal 3 positioning maneuvers are the most effective treatment. I have another video on decoding if your vertigo is BPPV, and I will link that in the comments below so you can help identify if your vertigo is from BPPV and if you do possibly need these Canela 3 positioning maneuvers. These maneuvers are typically effective in one to three sessions. And I know on this channel, I am here to give you advice on how to treat your dizziness at home. But honestly, remember this content is for people who have had a vestibular evaluation from a medical professional who have been diagnosed appropriately and know what condition that they are dealing with. For these maneuvers to be effective, you need to know a few things. You need to know which ear is involved, which canal is involved, and you have to have enough flexibility to do these maneuvers to get your head in the exact position to take the crystals and put them back where they belong so your vertigo goes away. If you don't have those three components, you may actually make your symptoms worse. So take this information and my advice to you is to seek a professional for treatment of your BPPV because if you can get rid of that with a Canela 3 positioning maneuver in one to three sessions, it is totally worth your time to do that with a trained professional. The second approach is adaptation. This is the foundation of vestibular rehab and is most effective for people diagnosed with a unilateral hypofunction. And in easy speak, that means one inner ear nerve is broken. So when I think of hypofunction, I think of the analogy tug of war. So think of a flag in the middle with five equally strong people on each side. If you have a virus or some condition that weakens one inner ear, it's like having two guys on the left side and five guys on the right. So whenever you use your inner ear, basically whenever you move your head up, down, or turn, the guys on the right side, the people on the right, have a stronger pull in comparison to the left, and your flag, your equilibrium, will move over to that strong side. So adaptation exercises are meant to make that more equal. It improves the strength on the left side and decreases the tug on the right side so that flag stays in the middle. The whole purpose of adaptation exercises is to improve the VOR reflex, the vestibular ocular reflex. And that function is to keep the eyes stable on a target whenever your eyes are moving. So you may have heard these exercises called gaze stability. So think of gaze stability exercises as decreasing the pull from the strong side and increasing the pull from the weak side so we keep our equilibrium right in the middle. So if you have an equal pull or input from the inner ear, you won't have dizziness, imbalance, or unsteadiness on the feet. How long do adaptation exercises take to work someone with one inner ear involved, no history of stroke, concussion, or other neurological issues, typically in the neighborhood of about six weeks? But that is if the exercises are prescribed appropriately. I see a lot of patients 
thinking that they did vestibular rehab, but they were never given gaze stability exercises. They were only giving eye exercises. So they have to be prescribed the right way. And I do have a video on my exact formula of what the science says on how gaze stability exercises should be performed. I will also link that in the comments below. And what diagnoses are appropriate for adaptation exercises? Vestibular neuronitis, labyrinthitis, Meniere's disease after an attack. It won't prevent an attack, but it can help hasten the recovery afterwards. It's appropriate for acoustic neuroma, rehab after surgery, post-COVID or vaccine-related dizziness, stroke of the inner ear, or any dizziness that is experienced after a surgical procedure of the inner ear would be appropriate for adaptation exercises as well. Also, if you suffer from 3PD or vestibular migraine and your vestibular therapist finds that your VOR reflex is impaired in any way, these adaptation exercises could benefit you as well. It is good to know that even people with a healthy inner ear experience dizziness of a one to a two out of a zero to 10 scale, and that is completely normal. If you have more than a two out of 10 dizziness, you could likely benefit from adaptation exercises. The third principle of recovery is habituation. Habituation basically is getting used to a stimuli or a task that makes you uncomfortable until your brain desensitizes and gets used to it. Exercises are completely individualized and meant to provoke just a mild to moderate dizzy response while performing them. Now these are used after BPPV and other sources of positional dizziness have been ruled out, and we just know that your brain is kind of hypersensitive to those tasks. Who are they used for? Commonly 3PD, vestibular migraines, or other neurological dizziness like Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, or stroke. Some examples of habituation exercises can be bending over to put dishes away, um, getting up out of a couch or a chair if you experience dizziness, laying into bed or getting out of bed, turning and feeling dizzy, riding on an elevator, or even walking up or down a ramp would all be examples of different tasks that we could experience dizziness with and desensitize with repeated exposure. So the prescription is totally based on tolerance. How I prescribe the exercises is we pick two tasks that we wanna tackle and we perform six repetitions each day of that task until you no longer experience dizziness. Now me personally, I prefer a very grounded approach to habituation exercises. So I like in a very safe, comfortable zone to do three reps with eyes open and three reps slow and cautiously with eyes closed. Now with the eyes closed, what that does is make sure that you're in tune with your body you're moving slow and cautiously, and you're paying attention to more about what your feet and your body is feeling versus what your head is feeling, that improper dizziness. So I really want you to ground when you do your eyes closed habituation. My goal is to get people to trust their body again and form a positive relationship with movement. Starting to prove to the brain that you are in control of your body, you move when you want to, and with a purpose. After the symptoms go away with the tasks that you picked, you would pick two more tasks and just repeat that process until you no longer experience dizziness with particular tasks. Lastly, the fourth principle is substitution. This treatment approach focuses on using other body systems to counteract the loss of your vestibular function. So that means we would be using the balance centers so our feet, our core, our booty. So the eye exercises that we use to substitute are eye tracking exercises or smooth pursuits, head turning exercises or saccades. Substitution is used for conditions like bilateral hypofunction or both inner ears being damaged, concussion, visual vertigo, 3PD, and vestibular migraine. When a patient has decreased vestibular function, increased body awareness can be extremely important in overcoming dizziness and imbalance from vestibular loss.
Now these exercises are best used in combination with adaptation exercises that I mentioned earlier. They should not be used in isolation alone to treat weakness of the inner ear. They are definitely to serve as a complement to adaptation exercises. And they do typically take longer to take effect and I normally prescribe these exercises in the neighborhood of 10 to 12 weeks. Truly, treatment principles should be selected depending on a patient's symptoms and individualized to your capabilities, which is why I like advocating for you to see a vestibular therapist, which is if you do have one in your area. If you don't, you can always reach out to me on my website at customcarerehab.com, which I will include in the links below if you need to reach out to me for a virtual coaching program, or if you happen to live in Ohio for an in-person physical therapy appointment, you can reach out to me via my custom care rehab website as well. If you have any other questions and would like to reach out to me, you can email me at treatdizzinessathome at gmail.com. Thank you for joining me today. Remember, you have the power to reclaim your life from dizziness, and I am here to support you every step of the way. Until next time, stay strong, stay balanced, and take care. And if you have not already, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of the new weekly content that I'll be dropping every Tuesday.